decide to skip. Now have primary control. And this this case we're about to discuss is called the Betty and Barney Hill case. There's a lot of Bettys. A lot of Bettys associated we, with. Uh, we had Betty Cash the other day. That's right. That's yeah. right. Now we have uh, Betty Hill. On September 19th in 1961, they had been married for a few months. So anyway, they decided to take a trip to Canada. Okay. And to Montreal. Oh, nice. Yeah. Or how do you say it in French? Montreal. That's with the Canadian accent. Oh. Montreal. So they, while they were there, they visited Niagara Falls. Nice. You know, which most people, yeah, that's very a lot nice. of people yeah, did. My parents did it from France. They yeah, went up there yeah, yeah. and did the... It's very popular. Tacky uh, tourist. Uh, the tacky boat uh, ride. Heart, heart oh, oh, okay. uh, jacuzzi. <laughs> they didn't go over the over the I think they fallen uh, barrel or anything like no, that. No, 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 not that no? crazy. They're okay. crazy, but not that crazy. Oh. While they were returning from Niagara Falls, you know, it was the last leg of their journey home, mm -hmm. and um, they were leaving a diner in Vermont. Oh, nice. On on that evening. They thought they would return home on September 20th, uh, around 2, two in the morning, 2 a.m. And as they were driving, Barney noticed a bright light in the sky that seemed to be pacing their vehicle or, fo oh. or following their vehicle. As he saw this light in the sky, it continued to follow them, which was, and he pointed it out to Betty at one time. And it was rather unusual because it wasn't following them in a straight line. The roadway was actually S winding, winding through the road. mountain range, and this light was following them. Very strange. <laughs> yeah, following them, on, you know, down the road. And no sound, no sound. Uh, not at this point. Not because if point. it was a helicopter, or I mean, well, Barney, 60s, yeah. Barney was a um, aviation. Uh, oh, so he would know. No, 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 no. He he didn't fly himself. But he was into, uh, you Aviation, know, yeah. he was well, into uh, aircraft and well, things well, like that. But you I'm know? saying he would have noticed, recognized signs of known aircraft. Right, right. So initially he thought it was uh, an airliner or that it was a helicopter that just happened to be in the area. Right. Okay. So at one point he stopped the car and he took out his binoculars <laughs> to see what this thing was. He had binoculars in the car. He had binoculars in the car, right. you know? So it was still kind of far away, and he could kind of make it out. You know, Betty said to him that at one time she thought that it was spinning, and she said to him, I think it's a flying saucer. They continued driving on Route 3 near Lincoln. Then all of a sudden the object hovered about 100 feet above their car. Wow, that's... So Barney became scared he slammed on the brakes can you show a picture of uh, the couple just sure. quickly sure 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 right here there here's a go. picture of the couple here and this they're actually holding a copy of the book that was written about their incident interrupted journeys called. yes yes there was also a movie that was uh oh he was part of the lions club wasn't he yeah the pin yeah while he, you know, observed this thing hovering over the roadway, he slammed on the brakes and he grabbed his handgun that he also had in the car. Oh, what, what state are we in right now? I'm now oh. we're in New Hampshire. He was frightened. He grabbed his gun. He looked at it one more time through the binoculars and he said he could see beings inside the windows dressed in some kind of gray uniforms. Wow. So he's another and one that saw the inside. Yeah, so he put down the binoculars and, and he pointed the gun towards the object. He tried to, but he was unable to fire the gun. Because of, he just froze? That's something Either he froze or, or the gun malfunctioned. That I don't, I don't know the exact details. He thought at the time that these creatures that were inside, these, these people that were inside the windows there, were going to try and capture them. Oh, right. So... He jumped back in the car and they took off. They started hearing beeping sounds coming from their trunk. From of their the trunk. trunk. Coming from the trunk of their car. They both lost consciousness. 
That's really strange, yeah. While, while they were driving. Somehow, they were able to get home, but they don't remember how. And when they got home, they had some missing time that they couldn't account for. They couldn't account for the time that these beeping sounds were happening from the trunk of their car to the time they got home. Right. There's a whole... There's a, there's a gap in their memory and a gap in time. Right. And they don't know how they got home without crashing that car. Without... It, right? it was like almost hypnosis. Exactly. Some Something uh -huh. happened where they were unable to remember <coughs> how they got home. Barney's shoes on the top of the toes were scratched for some reason they were severely scratched like he had been dragged with his you oh, know oh like he was putting him asleep and then drag yeah right carried. like the like the right, toes right, right, of right, his right, shoes right. were all right. scuffed up right and betty's dress was torn in one part and it was discolored in like some some kind of liquid was was oh, on well, like stained stained mean? yes right. so um alien semen <laughs> who knows who knows <laughs> Uh, who knows? So Barney started having these very disturbing dreams. Right. And he seemed to be um, having mental issues at the time. Well, what happened was Barney went to see a doctor because at one point he was unable to work. He was such a nervous wreck. Right. That, you know, he was having flashbacks. He thought of something that he couldn't explain. And the doctor, his doctor said he should go see this um, psychiatrist named mm -hmm. Benjamin Simon mm -hmm. and discovered from the first session he's suffering from what we now call PTSD. Okay, post, well, from post-traumatic post stress disorder. disorder. That something severe had happened to him that affected his mental capacity to, to operate in the real world, so to speak. Yeah, that's, uh, you know... Happens to a lot of people. So he it affected him so much he couldn't he couldn't drive a truck anymore. So did they try hypnosis to to figure well, it out? Well, that's eventually what um, Doctor Simon suggested that right. that you know he could try hypnosis to see if maybe they could discover what the, the what the, the root cause the root, of yeah. of this um, condition was. Right. You know, um, maybe it was something that ha happened in his childhood or... Yeah, you don't know. Or, or whatever. They started these hypnosis sessions and Dr. Simon recorded them. Oh, he did. So there's, there's so, actually... So online, you can if you go online, you can find little oh. clips of some of these tapes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, there's several documentaries where they show an actual uh, hypnosis sessions with him and... Betty would, said to him that she was also having strange dreams. So right. he also started hypno, hypnotizing her. Right, because of what I remember, they hypnotized both of them. They hypnotized both of them separately and sometimes together. But they had the same results in some cases? or they, was it? They had reported similar things had happened. Exper yeah. Right, similar things had happened. So From the same time? from that same incident so there, there was yes. something they reported that the same beings right the same it, spacecraft it, or whatever it was and that things had been done to them which might be different so what they told him was that when he regressed them hypnotically mm -hmm. barney said that the ufo landed on the roof of the car and then eventually was in front of the car on the ground right ahead of them the car stopped he doesn't know if he put on the brakes or if it it's was probably, somehow yeah. stopped and then once the object was on the ground it opened the hatch opened and there was a ramp and not a ladder this time. not a ladder this time <laughs> and several of these beings came out and as they walked to the via their car they separated some of them went on Barney's side, some of them went on, on Betty's side, side yeah. and then they took them out of the car, and well, then they took them inside. Barney was trying to fight, but he was somehow uh, in a mental state where he was a little bit subdued. Yeah. They he, both were. They he, both were. And Betty was crying, and she was telling them, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. 
But they took both of them inside this craft up this ramp, supposedly. Right. And then they were taken into separate rooms. That's, so uh, Barney was taken in one room. She was taken in another room. So he described some of the things that happened to him. But Betty had a, a, a much better recollection of what happened to her. More detailed, yeah. More detailed. So what she described was that they were both um, taken in these separate rooms, disrobed, and that, um, you know, that hair samples, there were scrapings that they did with some oh, type of skin. instrument right, to, to get, flakes. To get skin, skin, skin samples. Yeah, skin cells. And there were um, fingernail clippings that were taken. Really? And she said that all of these samples were put on something that looked like a glass slide. Oh, like from microscope? Like you would look under a microscope right, right, right. with. She said it was very similar to that. Similar, which... Which kind of makes sense, yeah. right? If, if you were, uh, like uh, our scientists, when we go out into the uh, bush or wherever and we're studying elk or, wh or whatever it might be, right. you know, when you tranquilize them, you're going to do different types right. of tests right, right. and tag you're going to take samples yeah. and tag them and things like that, right? So it would make sense that if there was some other race from somewhere else, if they did come here, the same they, might, they might do the same thing to yeah, us, right? Exactly. While she was in this room and they were examining her, one of these entities ran in from the other room where Barney was and started pulling on her teeth. Her teeth? Her teeth. So what had happened was Barney had false teeth. Oh, so they couldn't... They, he had oh. dentures. So oh, that's so funny. Apparently didn't know what dentures were, and they thought, do all of these creatures have teeth that come out? So at one point, they were inserting needles into their heads, Oof. into their arms, and into their legs. <laughs> Whether they were injecting them or taking blood samples, she's not really sure. And at one point, they took a large um, syringe with a very large bore, very long needle, mm -hmm. and they inserted it into her navel. That's and she said it was excruciatingly well, yeah. painful. Just putting your fingers. Uh, so there was one of these creatures, one of these beings, beings, yeah, that she calls the leader, because he seemed to be in charge of what right, was going right. on. And he came over to her at that time when he realized she was in pain. And she said to him, trying to communicate to him, why are you doing this to me? And then he put his hand over her forehead and the pain stopped. And then he said to her, somehow he communicated, whether it was telepathic or he spoke to her, somehow he communicated, this is a pregnancy test. Now, in, <laughs> yes. So in 1961, there was nothing of that sort of pregnancy, you know, test. of of a medical um, uh, practice right. that they did that for for a pregnancy test. However, in the 70s, there were two types of pregnancy tests developed where they used a large bore needle into the um, navel. navel to and one of them was called amniocentesis that was the process okay. the, the medical process and what they do is they insert this large needle into the navel and they extract fetal fluid so that they can check on the baby but this did not exist 10 years until 10 years later it this did not exist until after 10 years later so for her to to come up with something that didn't exist right is and and, and they thought it was baloney at the time yeah, you know but that, still make that she was making up could, stories it could be uh but it's interesting that they were able you know si uh, doctors were able at some time to develop something like this and i i don't think it has anything to do with her story it just happened to be a medical breakthrough that was one of the tests they performed on her and after they were finished with their examination of betty the what she who she calls the leader took her into another room and there seemed to be some people working in this room. It was a much larger room. And he showed her this screen or something that had a, a, it looked like a star map on it. And he asked her, do you know where you are? Oh, on the or she, she asked him, 
where do you come from? And he showed her. And so they're looking at the star map and he says, do you know where you are on this map? And she looked at it and she said, no. And he said, then it's useless for me to tell you where I'm from on this map because you don't know where you're from. Right. She said, you know, no one's going to believe that this happened to us. She was given a book really? that, was a, that was about an inch thick that looked like it was made out of sheets of plastic. And it had some strange writing on it right. and inside of it. Where's that and, book now? Well, when they were leaving, just before they left the spacecraft or whatever it was, there was a discussion amongst these beings to that, hey, you can't give her that. Oh, okay. So they took it back, supposedly. So like I said before, Betty's dress was, was Stained, ripped yeah. and it had some stains on it. And the dress was analyzed several times. Who did they analyze? The um, government? I mean, no, 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 no. These were private entities that um, they hired. That uh, who? Um, researchers that were interested know, in the case. That were interested in oh, the okay. case. So it's self. Uh, yeah, it wasn't the government. You know, okay. these were. Um, you know, it was probably looked at by the government, but I don't know if they did any of their own analysis. But or disregarded. But there was whatever, a company yeah. called Frontier Analysis Limited that did a report that concluded that the substances, the liquids that were found, or the staining that was found on the dress mm -hmm. were not natural, and that um, they came from an external source of some kind. What do they mean? Like, uh, um, they said that the... External source. That the discoloration of the dress that was pink, and like the, the discolored right, color right, right, was, right, right. was pink, and they said that that it, it was caused by a chemical effect of some sort. Chemical effect. Okay. Chemical effect of some sort. And the dye and the actual material fibers were affected by whatever this chemical substance was. And that the fabric was coated with a biologically derived material composed mostly of protein. Really? Wow. Could have been semen. Yeah, it could have been. Well, <laughs> well, who knows? Alien semen. Who, who knows? Interesting. Yeah, it's one of the most so interesting. Yeah, I think it's cases. It's, yeah, and it's been do pretty well documented compared to uh, a lot of them. Right. Uh, I mean, I kind of knew this, but today you brought me more information. So now I'm curious about the, the actually the audio. Of right. The, right. And I want to listen to it. I'd like to hear all the all the tapes. Right. I don't know if they all exist out there, but I know that there are some that you can find online. Yeah, maybe we can do another show on this or something i mean we can do so many shows <laughs> but uh well let us know what you want you know if you want to listen to yeah, those if you want to hear more about this case or yeah, you know any additional details let us know and we'll do uh another show we'll do a follow-up maybe a yeah. section of a show or an entire with the, show with we'll the see. audio and analysis of the audio or right, something. Right, yeah. right. see you next time on inside, inside the, the skiff, skiff.